Welcome back. We are talking million dollar careers. I, uh, as always, I'm here with my uh, my good friend Rob Houghton. Rob is the uh, uh, president of uh, MR Fairfax. He's an executive recruiter. He's a uh, executive coach. He uh, he trains special forces in the military and has a lot of cool things going on in his life. And uh, as always, hey, welcome back, Rob. How's it going? What's going on, brother. Good to be back, man. Good to be back. It's uh, you you you're 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 back from vacation. Now you got to get back to work. Start back out with the from- podcast. Back from a three-week cruise to Greece, came back, hit the airport at Dallas, and immediately got sick as a dog, man. Uh, it's flu season. It's flu season. Yeah. Well, anyway, welcome home. So, hey, we got a good topic today. Yeah, man. It's uh, why why do people really leave jobs? And I was talking about this to a group of CEOs last week. I was invited to a conference last week, two conferences last week, and I was speaking to a group of CEOs, and they wanted to talk about retention. And I said, all right, let's talk about retention. And and ultimately everybody, you know, you, you always see that thing on LinkedIn, you know, people, people don't leave bad companies, they leave bad managers and yeah, you know, all yeah. the stupid stuff. And and the reality is, look, there's six reasons. There are six detailed reasons why people will leave an organization. Challenge, location, advancement, the ability to move up the, the food chain, money, people, and security. That's it. It's not a PhD. You know, it's not a PhD class and why people won't stay with your company. It's six, you know, focused reasons. I'm going to write these down, man. So challenge, location, advancement. Money. Money. People. people and security. Great. Okay. Yeah. And and everybody comes back. They think money is the most important thing. Yeah. It's not. I mean, yeah, it, it is a thing. Yeah. But it's rarely the most important thing. Yeah. I, I totally agree, man. Uh, this is good. So what do you think is the most important one? What's the one that drives m- m- most? Well, I think it's I think it's an individual thing, but I think what what it comes down to is, you know, it comes down to a tactical yeah, you know, it's a tactical problem. Every yeah, you know, when you think about you, you think about a company and you've got you know CEO and the CEO has three, you know CFO, COO, chief admin officer, CHRO, he's got his C level team. And then you break it down from there. You've got vice presidents who have directors, and you sit there and say, okay, from an organizational level, take a military unit, for instance. You know, a military, you know, the leader of the the leader of the platoon has got to look at his 12 or 14 people. And say, all right, I got 12 or 14 people. What does each one of these 14 people need in their life to stick around with me? Right. You know, I got a, you know, I got, I got a challenge. Maybe I have to give somebody a little bit more challenge to keep them engaged. Sure. You know, location. I can't change the location in any more in any more fashion. I can change physics. Yeah. But what can I do with my location that makes them yeah. makes it more appealing? Money. I'll throw something else in there. Yeah. So you're talking about special operation units, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, s- small units. So one of the things about like special forces, uh, 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 you know, along the lines that you're talking about, you, you're exactly right. That team leader, in order to establish a highly motivated fighting unit mm-hmm. that's not going to turn and run, has to satisfy the needs of all of his senior enlisted guys, you know, right. the NCOs on the team. So he's got to be really, you know, expert listener. He's got to be ad- addressing all these needs. One of the big things, one of the big challenges actually that, that we always ran into is you get a couple of peak performers, a, a couple of studs. Right. And man, you got to be careful about where you populate those studs mm-hmm. on your individual teams because the company's made up of basically four platoons, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in a battalion's you know, basically four companies. So you'll have an opportunity to sprinkle your, your uh, smaller units with these superstars. Mm-hmm. If you put too many superstars uh, on the same team, it'll discourage others. And that's when we saw the greatest right. amount of attrition. What you're talking about, why do people leave jobs? I mean, you got to be careful too of the composition of your team because if right. you don't compose your team and, and have complementary people, in other words, if you don't want to have too many divas, but, but but you want a couple that could destroy a team. And that's when people start heading for the exit doors. Well, you think about challenge, 
you, know, you think about challenge, you know, people tend to, people will rise. Good players will rise to the occasion. And you think about a college, you know, college athlete, college football player. You know, all of a sudden you put him into a professional team. He goes and plays for the Ravens. All of a sudden now, you know, the level of competition, it's not, you know, it's, it's a, it's a three X multiple. Yeah. The level, you know, will they rise to the occasion? And if they don't rise to the occasion, then their career is very limited. But that's what people are looking for. They want that challenge. They want to go, hey, look, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. if you give me the challenge, I will write you. Know, your strong players will rise yeah. to it. And they are seeking that challenge. If you, you know what I call that? I, I call that velocity. So velocity in a company is how fast can people advance? Yep. In other words... If you look, I look at some of my clients and there's like no velocity. It's like people are stagnant. They're not growing. They're not advancing. And I tell them, you got to, you got to create some velocity here. Like take some people that have been in a position for 10, 12 years, put them in, put them in another position, maybe, you know, freshen them up, cross train a little bit, but you got to create some velocity in an organization or else, as you say, there's not going to be advancement. If people don't advance, they're going to leave. Yeah, they got to be challenged. People got to be challenged. You know, dim, you know, if if you give them project, if you, if you're constantly just giving them the project, hey, color in between the lines, they get bored. There's no challenge. They get itchy. The idle mind is the devil's playground. Yeah, and they will leave. And you got to make sure that you got your good. You know, like I'm not talking about your BC players. I'm talking about the players, the million dollar career players, who need to be constantly challenged. And, you know, want to rise to the occasion and they want to see, you know, they're the, Hey, look, if I knock this out of the park, what's next. And when I knock this out of the park, what's next. And they got it. And, and you as a tactical leader got to be constantly saying, all right, these people, I need to keep these people engaged and I need to give them constantly. You know, I get more the the one, number one reason people call me looking for a new job. I don't know about you. Is they're not, they're just bored. They're not challenged anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and that's because uh, people need to be, you know, as you said, people, you know, good people who we deal with. You and I only deal with good people. You know, we're just dealing with, with the A player. They have, to, they have to be challenged. And they have to they, – they, they, it's not just being challenged, I find, with people, is they have to see a path of advancement. They have to see that velocity where if I do perform, I'm, you know, yep. I'm challenged, so great. Yep. Challenge now you come in and you're and you knock out the sales goal, you got to see some sort of a path because you're right, even for a sales guy, it's, it's not just money. Yep, it's challenge. You got you know, and challenge and advancement, I think, are kind of almost synonymous. They're yeah. not necessarily synonymous terms, but they're pretty close to each other. People are one, you know, look, and at the end of the day, people will leave an organization because look, you know, hey, my boss isn't leaving and I got nowhere to go, so I'll go somewhere else, right. You know, yeah. they, they're not challenging their current job and there's nowhere to go in the company. So they'll leave. That's that, you know, that's a little bit of a natural state of turnover. You know, if yeah. you're the VP of finance and the CFO isn't leaving the company, well, guess what? You better, and you want to be a CFO, you, know, you got to go. What that's about, just a, um, so what about the, what about people leaving because they feel their company no longer has a purpose and they see, yep. you know, a guy's working for Ford and all of a sudden he's looking at Chevy and Chevy's like all into, you know, EVs and, and, yep. and they have like a purpose now that they, they want to like be the EV king. I don't yep. know if this is the case or not. I'm just using an example, but like company A is kind of stagnant. Company B is like on the road, man. They're, they're, yep. they are the shit. You know what I mean? I mean, they got a purpose driven mission. How important is that, do you think? Yeah, I think it's really important. In fact, uh, Bill Koch is a former uh, CEO of AMR Combs, and he's an executive recruiter. And he's an executive yeah. coach. Does yeah. a, and he tells me, he goes, that's the number one thing people under 35 are looking for in their right. life right now. Purpose. purpose. You, your company needs to have a purpose. They need to have a mission. Your individual division you know, if you're a leader in a company, you need to have a purpose and you need to be telling the people what the purpose is. What is your mission statement? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and then the other one, I, I would, and maybe this is under location, but the other one is uh, work-life balance and flexibility. 
uh, given the fact that my market's a little bit different than yours, Craig. See, I typically deal with people in that 75000 to like $175,000. Mm-hmm. I, I call that like mid, mid-market, mid you know, like your director level people, your, your managers of small teams. A lot of those people mm-hmm. are like fixated almost on this, you know, remote work environment, flexibility, work family. Now you deal with people that, that are like, CEOs that may not have those same concerns, but how do you, how do you see in your business the importance of that work life balance and yeah? Uh, there's no so yeah. My world, look, yeah. My personally, there's no work life balance. I work, and I I and and I have work and I have life. Yeah, look, when I started my business, there was no work life balance. It was. You know, uh, you know, the Great Recession was, you know, I don't say it, it hurt. Let's just say it wasn't devastating, but it was a, it was a, you know, Category Three hurricane. Yeah. And you as you started, but you know, it's like to start a business. It's like you're focused on the business. You got two kids that you know they're eight, eight years old, and they want to go to college someday. And you know, it, it's like it's like, hey, look, I got to go do what I got to do. Do. You know, eventually now I'm starting to find some more balance, but. You know, yeah, yeah. The the the. I think the work life balance is 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 a misnomer. Yeah, you know, you're working, or you're at home, and there's compartmentalization. Yeah. And when you're at home, you're focused on your family. When you're at work, you're focused on your work. And it's not this. Hey, I want perfect harmony in my life. I think that's you know, people who want perfect harmony in their life, they go find. You know, it's a different deal. You know, ba- you know, professional baseball players are focused on the field. In the off season, they're still training, and then they're focused on their family. But you know, yeah. for six, seven months a year, you know, hey, look, I'm out here making you know ten million bucks a year. I got a job to do. I'm doing it, and yeah. I'll worry about it. Yeah. So I think that's kind of the way I look at work. I, I look at work life balance more as compartmentalization than balance. But coming back to it, when you talk about hybrid work, you know, location. You can't change physics, but if your office is in downtown New York, you know, give people three, you know, if people can handle the, can handle the, you know, the responsibility, you give them three days a week at home, work from home for three days a week, show up to the office three, two days a week. You know, that's part of location, right? I wonder how Tom Brady thinks about work-life balance now. Differently than Giselle. I yeah. mean, there's a guy that, uh, you know, pretty much has it together. You know, yeah. I love Tom Brady. I read his book, TB12. I'd recommend that for anybody. But, uh, you know, I think how 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 he would look at, at work-life balance is kind of like the way I look at it, too. You know, if you have to consciously think about, am I working or am I doing family stuff? Yeah. Then you're probably not going to be a peak performer. I mean, I work all the time like you, you know, yep. my business never turns off. I am always on. There is no delineation between. 24, my my brain is constantly, my brain is, it's and, and maybe that's a fault. I don't know, but well, my brain is constantly the, engaged in. The reason is, is because we love what we do. I know you do. You and I talk about this off camera. I mean, I love this business. I love recruiting. I love, you know taking really good people from bad companies and punishing those companies. I love to punish bad bad management. I love to punish bad people. I love to punish bad situations. I'm I'm a man of the people. I I look at it differently. I I love doing this business because I can make a difference in people's lives. Every Uh, week I make a difference in someone's life. That's, that's a real turn on for me, man. I love making differences in people's lives. You know, the money is great too, but I, I I just love like equaling the battlefield, you know. I look at it differently. It's, it's how I look at it is different. I look at it like <clears throat> you know, last night at quarter to ten, before we got on this podcast this morning. Last night, quarter to ten, Lisa and I were, you know, having a glass of wine. And all of a sudden she sees a little click in my brain. She's like, What? And I go, oh, n- nothing. You know, I'm like, nothing. And this morning, before I get on the podcast, I'm talking to I'm talking to this guy in Florida about a CEO role that I've got. And I'm like, damn it, I wish I, I thought about it like 940. Like this guy would be perfect for the role. Yeah, and yeah. so I think about it different than you. It's like to me, it's 
I've got a company that needs a new CEO. Who's the rock star that I'm not looking at? Yeah, who's the rock star that I could put in there? And who's, you know, he'll make a couple of million, you know, the rock star that I put in there will make a couple million bucks out the back end. And it's great. You know, I was thinking, and all of a sudden, like last night, I half, half, into, half, you know, half into a glass of wine, I'm like, ooh, yeah, him. Cool. I do think of it, that, you know, it, 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 it's kind of funny because you and I think are thinking totally different about our businesses. You're probably more positive. I'm, I'm more of a cynic, you know what I mean? But it's the same, it's a different side of the same coin and that coin is our client. So yeah. our client at the end of the day is going to benefit because I bring yeah. my client superstars. So my clients love me because they say, hey, Rob, I need a sales guy who's who's got this, 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 and this, or an account manager who's like this, this, and this. I'm going to find that guy. All I'm saying is my satisfaction is not derived from completing that search for my client. Yep. Because my client at the end of the day really didn't give a shit about me. Okay. Yep. All they want is the candidate. That's is that's where I look at it too. Really you know, fine. And, but and, and, you know. what really turns my engine is the fact that that guy that I get is going to be probably from some firm that I know mm -hmm. is mishandling, mistreating, harassing their employees. Mm -hmm. Not in all cases, you know, that single mom who's, who's, who's making 70,000 that, that, that that's been there 25 years and she'd be mm -hmm. getting, Posed for 25 years, she should be making a hundred. I love recruiting those people. Yeah. Or the lady who's working for the mom and the pop, you know, with the kids and she's getting and you know, she's getting taken advantage. It's like the Robin Hood, man. You know, yeah. I should yeah. call myself Robin Hood recruiting. Maybe I'm gonna change my name to like Robin Hood recruiting. Yeah, you don't want to be associated with Robin Hood right now. There's a uh, there's a really <laughs> mediocre financial <laughs> services company called Robin Hood that uh but, but man, you know, I I kid you not. I see these companies out there that mishandle, mistreat people. Man, yeah. I love to steal their people. Yeah, I, the way I look at it is, I, the way I just look at it is this: it's 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 more like I just call people. Okay, if I had something really good for you, which I do, would you listen to it? And the first question, like, yeah, what do you got? And that's the way I start. That's the way I start the dialogue with the right people. Uh, what do you got? I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. But uh, hey, so you know, but but let's move on. So you, you know. Challenge location, ability to move up the food chain, money, people, and security. Yeah. Money to me is a driver to some people. I mean, everybody wants, you know, salespeople are, you know, I do not want a salesperson who's not money motivated. Right, right. But uh, but I think in a lot of ways people are like, hey, look, I'll, I'll, I'm willing. And, and I always believe that people will not change jobs for a 5% pay raise and a kiss. There has to be a substantial, you know, there has to be some sort of, you know, changing jobs is stressful. It's a pain in the neck. It's hard to do. It's a big inconvenience. <clears throat> so I think that there's got to be enough upside, you know, to somebody it's not, you know, lateral moves don't work with yeah. money. Here's how I think of that. Mm -hmm. You have a good candidate. Mm -hmm. Guy's doing a great job. A gal's doing a great job. What we're really asking these people to do, if you really think about it, is very simple. Exchanging a known for an unknown. If you're going to be changing a known for an unknown, there better be a good reason. And I, I tell agree. people, it can't be just money. Mm -hmm. It's got to be exactly what you're saying, Craig. It's got to be, you know, opportunity, advancement. It's going to be purpose, location, flexibility. Mm -hmm. These are all qualitative factors. If if a person's going to exchange a known for an unknown, they very seldom do it for just the five or ten percent raise. Yeah, and this is where I, combination. And this is where I can't stand HR. I'm just yeah, you know, this work yeah, you know, and and more times than not, yeah, a really good. Here's what a really good HR person says. Hey, be careful, Craig. These are the guys. Uh, that I don't care. I don't Come care. Up. I've already had my fill of HR last week. So <laughs> um, I got to call her an HR person a couple weeks ago. Like, yeah. Rob, you're out of your effing mind. Come on, I'm, man. Uh, I'm, you, I'm on, I'm on somebody's, let's just say I'm on somebody's, uh, I'm on somebody's bad list, right? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm not getting a Christmas card from this year, but yeah, what, a fruit cake. yeah, this job pays between 200 and $210,000 plus a bonus, a little bit of bonus. And I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here's what the good ones say. Here's what the good leaders say. Bring us the right person. Bring us the right person. Here is the here is the challenge that we need fixed. Here's the problem we need fixed. 
Here's what we need done. Here is what we have with a goal in mind for this role. Bring us the right person and we'll figure it out. We'll get, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, 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 I, you know, I just had the conversation with a guy. He's like, look, you don't worry about it. Just bring me the right damn person. The and right I'll figure guy, out, I, I, right? I'll, I'll, I'll get them on board. I'll figure it out and I'll run. Yeah. You know, we'll figure out how to pay them. I'm like, okay, I can do that. But you know, it's like it's like the old you know, you, you 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 train special forces. I went through you know Navy Navy fighter weapons school as a an E two guy. Of all things, and the first thing they say is don't limp into the fight. You know, if you're outgunned, outmatched, not ready to fight, not in a good tactical position, don't go there. Right, and that's what too many companies do with money is they try to limp into the fight. You know, they don't really think about ooh, okay, yeah. You know, look, if it's just a, a APAR standard, you know. You know, we just need somebody to, to to manage invoices, whatever. That's that's a job. But if you need somebody who's going to change the dynamic of your company, you know, figure it out. You know, figure out what is going to take the right person to come into the organization from a comp standpoint. And hey, what do we call this? The right kind of guy, right? The right kind of guy. But yeah, the right kind of guy do. wants to the right kind of guy or the right kind of girl wants to go to the right kind of company. Exactly. And the right kind of company is the one that says, Hey, look, if you if you if you fix these three things, you'll be okay. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah you're good. That's why I like private equity. I mean, they're a little ADD, they're all over the place. You got yeah, you know, but but at the end of the day, they find a CEO who fixes the company that they just bought that really needs fixing, and they can double or triple their money. Yeah, they're gonna pay them. Hell, you do that for us, we'll make you wealthy. I got exactly. no problem with that conversation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just intellectual firepower they're hiring. Yeah, exactly. So, no, man, that's why it all comes down to the RKG, you know, uh, and 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 the RKC, the right kind of company. And uh, you know, I don't really have any problem with with any of these. um, You know, challenge, location, advancement, the people, security. I I I think security stability is important. I think people want to feel like. You know, I can go to this company. It's not going to fall apart. It's not going to get mm-hmm. acquired. Yeah, I mean, even your best sales guys, they do get concerned about you know stability and security. If a leader is making their people insecure, yeah. If you can't do it, I'll find somebody who can. Yeah. yeah. If bad management, constant <clears throat> turnover, um, capricious behavior from a leader that keeps people. Focused not on their jobs, but on their security. Yeah. They're out. It's over. Yeah. It is over. Yeah. And, and as I was saying at this conference last week, when I see high rates of turnover in an organization, that to me is indicative of bad management and bad leadership. And it's it's indicative of a company that cannot get out of its own way. And people come and people go because there's nothing they're insecure about something yeah security to me is more important than money yeah so how do you tell when you recruit somebody out of out of an organization if it's their if if it's their problem or the company's problem in insofar as you know security issues or stability issues what you know look i th- i think it comes with very candid conversations you know, people know me, you know, okay, I got a little bit of an edge to me, a little bit, maybe, maybe a little, you know, maybe a little bit of a temper too. I'll, I'll admit it. You know, and it comes down to, I had a very tough conversation last week. You know, why did you send that email to somebody? It was, it was poorly written. Here's the way they took it. Why didn't you just pick up the phone and have a conversation with them? Yeah, right, exactly. But I think it comes down to honesty. And you, you you sit there and you tell a company, I can't work with you. Your turnover is your turnover is amazing. <clears throat> you know, the only constant in the turnover is you. What makes you think if you are the same and you are a constant, what makes you think the next person coming through the door is going to be any different? And the and and you know it's a very candid conversation. You know what? You know, I, I, I've i turned down a lot of search search assignments because it's just one more person going to the going to the gallows. You know, it's and and uh, no, 
Yeah. Or, or, or you got to go find some B player who just needs the job and they're willing to take anything because, you know, they're not that good and they just need a job and they're willing to go to some company that just needs a body. You know, well, this doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't make you feel good about it. So that's kind of the way I look about security is if you're, if you, if you're having a high, higher rate of turnover in your, in your organization for, for unhealthy reasons, you know, people, people will come and people will go for a lot of stuff, but if you've got a, a healthy level of turnover and you're making your people insecure, that's indicative of a bad, a bad organization. Yes. Yeah, so, so you look at turnover as a, as the key driver there. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. How about advancement? How do you, how can you tell if there's a sufficient amount of velocity within a company so that a guy's going to be happy? Well, you talk to him. You, you you talk to the you talk to the either you're talking to the business leader or you're talking to the uh you're either talking to the business leader or you're talking to the the person you know the executive and you're saying you know and they'll tell you hey I got nowhere to go here you know I'm kind of you know CEO's not leaving CFO's not leaving you know this is what I'm looking for yeah it's a small organization it's relatively flat I got to go find I got to go somewhere else okay. I find that you know organizations that don't measure performance in some form or fashion, either through KPIs or, you know, quarterly, um, you know, um, supervisory meetings, you, you know, performance reviews and that sort of thing. Companies that don't have that process in place a, a lot. A lot of these are your smaller companies. Yeah. Uh, th th those companies have issues with advancement because people don't really know, like, what do I have to do mm -hmm. to get advanced here? You know? Yeah. There's no accountability. Yeah. If people don't know what they need to do, I mean, you know, like, you know, what's the worst thing you can do to somebody? You, 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 you work them hard, you give them, you give, you know, they, 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 they deliver on all the assignments you give them or the challenges you give them. And then you just leave them stuck. You leave them stuck. Yeah. You know? Um, but on the flip side, I look at, you know, Gulfstream aircraft had, you know, they had a layoff a couple of years ago. It was big. It was like 700 people. It's huge. And it, it did two things. One, it sent a mess. It, yeah, it it affected managers to managers, senior managers, and directors with twenty to thirty years in the company. And you know, the bottom line was the message was, "Hey, you guys are kind of, you know." The message I took away from that was, "Hey, you guys all kind of hit your peak." You know, maybe they wanted a youth movement. I don't know. You know, it's it's like I'm not was inside that decision, but I, I look at it from an outside observer and I go, okay, my observation is this. Managers at 20 years who do not promote to director are 20-year managers and they can go find younger people who are less expensive. And, and they would advance junior people into a manager role, give them that advancement, you know, and the, the people that cannot move up are we're going to move them out. And that's that's that was my observation for what it was right or wrong. And so I look at people like if you're not advancing, if you're a, if you're a 10 year manager and that's the highest you can get, it's probably time to start looking for something else where you can advance. You're too comfortable in your job. Yeah. I think if you're sticking around for 10 years, as you say, you're taking a gamble on yourself because, uh, you know, chances are you're going to have a better career trajectory if you stick around for maybe five years or seven mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. stick around for 10 years you have the the chance to become stale people take you take you for granted mm -hmm. and other companies start looking at you as like this guy's not very dynamic he's just gonna he just took up a chair for 10 years and now he wants to come over here and take up another chair for 10 years i mean it's, you, it's, you gotta be careful of that too you know it's wheaties it's yeah. wheaties you have wheaties every day for breakfast for 10 years one day you wake up and you say, you know, I'm tired of we. I, yeah, I got to do something other than Wheaties. Maybe there's something better out there for me. That's the company. That's the way I look at. Yeah, you know, look, it's people. Companies are people. Companies are made up of people who are, you know, look, everybody's self, you know, their self interest is in mind. And is this person who's been in this manager role the best I'm ever going to get, or is there somebody else who is out there who maybe takes it, yeah, you know, takes it to the new level, helps me get my bonus. Etc. Right. So, you know, that was my observation, but that's, you know, that's, so I look at advancement that way. And, you know, there's um, the other side of the same coin here. We're talking about why do people, why do people leave their jobs? Why do people quit? Right. I mean, I think of it a little bit differently sometimes too. Like why do companies quit on their people? Yeah. 
You know, good question. It it's some you know it's a two way street. You know, it's a two way street. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, I, look. It, to me, it's a constant. It's a yin and yang. It's a tug of war. It's a little bit of a tug of war, right? You know, it's it's you know don't get you know look the the worst thing you can do in life is get really really comfortable. You get, if you get too comfortable with your spouse. You get too comfortable with your job. You get too comfortable with your life. You get too comfortable. You know, it's, it's, you know, take yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit and discover what you can do. Um, that's the way I look at that. And then I look at companies. I'm like, Hey, look, are you challenging people? Are you, are you being the best to them that you can be? I don't know if you said uh, life or wife, but I think you said wife. So I'm thinking to myself, I get scared sometimes because I'm thinking, man, if I don't get in better shape, if I don't get funnier, smarter, yeah, make more money, I mean, I can be out the door, man. You know, well, in a second, out, man. Look at, hey, look at your out on the driveway. Uh, man. All right, so look at your look at your relationship with look at your relationship with Stephanie. You know, what does she want? She wants some security that you're going to be there for, right? Lease is the same way. She wants people, mm -hmm. the, you know, the people part of it. Money, you know, look, the, the money issue is, it's okay. We're good. But I mean, she wants to be entertained more too. She's like, you, you know, your jokes are getting old. I've heard the same old stories. I let's mean, go to a I'm different like, restaurant. Let's go to a different restaurant. Let's go to Greece yeah, on a cruise. On, let's go man. to New York City. Let's go to New York City for a weekend and just do something different instead of yeah. staring at the TV every night, right? That's, it, it, you know, it's yeah. it's the same dynamic in your personal life as yeah. it is with your... Exactly right. You your, have to, re if you're not moving forward... I mean, you're moving backwards. So. You're dying. If yeah. you're not moving, you're dying. Yeah. If you're not moving a little bit, you're you're stale. You're dying. And that's yeah. It's just the same way in people. You know, people's relationships is where the business relationships. <laughs> but you know, and then, you know, and I was I was telling these CEOs last week. I do. I said, do not underestimate the power of culture in your organization. The people part. And here's the reality: A players hate B players. Can't stand them. The the people who do the work. Hate the people who co show up for work and don't do don't do anything. Do you think they hate those people? I mean, oh yeah. Do you don't think there's any understanding about? Well, this guy's got a different focus. He's into model trains, and I don't expect him to be here at six o'clock at night with me. I mean, you know. So I talk about Maddie, my daughter. You know, Maddie gets all these. She can't stand group projects. Yeah. In college. Why? Because Maddie's in nursing school and she needs the A. To graduate, she needs an A. And everybody knows that she needs an A. And so what do they do? They put them in groups of six. Two don't show up for any. Oh, what, oh, I'll just show up and I'll read the slide. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And two are off at somewhere else. And they're saying, I'll do my slides from, uh, you know, from the, you know, I'm, I'm down at the beach and I'll do my slides from my laptop at the beach. And they don't give any confidence that to her that, you know, they're willing to get an A. So what does she do? She's like, you know, I'll just do it. I'll do it. My, I will protect myself and I will get an A and I will hate you people because I need an A and you guys just don't care. Yeah. And that's what A players need it for some reason. Maybe yeah. they need it for their bonus. Maybe they need it for their pride. Maybe they need it for something, but they can't stand the people yeah. who show up or, 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 or just kind of are there, but don't really but, you know, participate. Yeah. So I'll make a comment about that too. So that, that's very interesting that you say that because I just had a meeting with my biggest and best client last week. Mm -hmm. And we talked about superstars and, and, and divas and bringing in like, you know, like, like like these high powered people. And one of the things yeah, that we talked about was there's a risk to bringing in these high powered people, peak performers, because a lot of them have attitudes for good reason. They got egos, they dress differently, big cars. I mean, you know, this is how not all of them, but, but a lot of them, particularly on the sales side are. Mm -hmm. So one of the big things that we figured out is, when we bring these people in during 2023, we're going to start, you know, I've got my marching orders. Did this company watch three more superstars? What we figured out is that we've got to make sure that these people are conditioned. Yeah. So we have to make sure that, you know, that these people are, are properly conditioned and educated to don't flaunt it. In yeah. other words, don't come off. Yep. At 
as a big shot because what will happen is they'll get buried. They'll yeah. be the subject of gossip. They'll be undermined. Mm-hmm. A lot of bad stuff will happen. So it's up to them actually to take these people aside at the front end and say, hey, you know, you, you're our fair haired boy, our fair haired woman. We're bringing you in. You're the big gun. We expect you to lead the charge or blah, blah, blah. But, you know, make sure you make sure you're sensitive to some of the other people in the organization because, you know, they're going to view you a certain way. So we have to make sure that these people get sensitized because otherwise you bring in somebody like that in an organization, mm-hmm. you, you you create that hate, you know, and yeah. that, that bad feelings that, that that can be very corrosive. I, um, I agree. And it's a balance there. And it's a balance. Yeah. But here, the way I always put it is I, a players hate work of, working with B players. They can't stand yeah. mediocrity. Yeah. You know, B players <clears throat> won't go to a organizations. Because they don't want to, they don't want to rise to the occasion. They don't want to be challenged. Yeah, yeah. You know, totally like, they they don't want to, they don't want to be challenged. They're they're fearful. They're yeah, you know, whatever. Um, a players will not go to B organizations unless they are there to turn them around. Sure. You think about companies with a lot of turmoil. Companies like I, I look at it. I'll put it a football analogy. I don't know how many first round draft picks are jumping up and down, going, you know, I really want to play for the Detroit Lions. You know, you think about a you know, you think about a team that's never really you know the, the manage or or the Washington Red, you know, the Washington Commanders now. You know, bad management, you know, can't get out of its own way. You know, now you find a couple of superstars that go, yeah, I'm there, but you know, fire the coach and let's go take something to the next level. Yeah. Um, that's what they'll do. So I think about Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy. Jack's an interesting, you know, Jack and I were sitting in, we were sitting out at a beach bar. And he had a really interesting thing. He goes, "Yo, a lot of headhunters have been calling me. You know, you know, Jack. He's just the oh, guy's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, a lot of headhunters have been calling me about COO roles." I said, "Yeah, you know." He's like, "Yeah," and it was some big name tech companies that wanted him to come and be a COO. And he said, "What's the problem?" They go, "Well, we got a weak CEO who needs a steady hand by him." And he goes, no, I'm not interested. And they say, why? He goes, fire the CEO, make me the CEO. I'll bring in a rock star COO and we'll be fine. But I'm not coming in to clean up the mess of some weak CEO. Yeah, right. Yeah. And and they're like, whoa. Yeah, that's the way you got to look at it. Yeah, yeah, if you, yeah that's that's Jack to a T. I um, love Jack, man. It's, um, matter of fact, I, yeah. I love Jack. He's a good dude, man. He just, right. he got it. He gets it. He's like, nope, I'm not coming in. You got a weak CEO. Get rid of the weak CEO. There's your problem right there. So, yeah, it's, yeah. He, he's so similar to us. It's scary, man, the way he he views other people. He, I would not want to work for either you, me, or Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to work for me either. I would not want to work for you. I wouldn't want to work for I wouldn't want to work for <laughs> Maddie looked at me the other. She Maddie looked at Lisa. We were we were having dinner the other night. She's like, "Dad, you're lucky." I go, "Why?" She goes, "She looked at Lisa. She goes, she's the only one that'll put up with you.'" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, she's probably you're probably right. So anyway, it's all good. Hey, how do people get all of you, Rob? Hey, man, I'm all over the freaking internet, man. So you, are. you write some great blogs. But but you can call me. Uh, you know, at the you know probably the easiest thing to do just go to the website www.mrfairfax.com. Um, management recruiters of Fairfax. Uh, you can email me at R Houghton, R H O U G H T O N at MR Fairfax. You can see it at, at the bottom of the screen. The easiest way to do it is just hit me back at Rob at MRFairfax.com. So. And Rob is an outstanding executive coach, outstanding executive recruiter. So great having you on, Rob, as always. And, and great, I man. always love the dialogues. So, All right, brother. You take care. Right, so, thanks, Talk man. Soon. See ya. I hope you enjoyed the latest edition of the Aerospace Executive Podcast. You can reach out to me directly, Craig at NorthStarESG.com, or check us out at www.NorthStarESG.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, or on YouTube. Just do a search for Aerospace Executive Podcast. Thanks again. I'm Craig Pippen.